Kevin Durant and the Suns take on Luka, Kyrie, and the Mavs in a West showdown. Katie's been prone to criticism, is also not afraid to fire back. In a chat with his manager and boardroom founder, Rich Kleinman, on the boardroom platform, Durant spoke about why he believes some in the media question his leadership. KD, talk to me. I'm not as charismatic as my peers. I don't have a personality that's like fit for TV like my peers and a lot of those stories of what we talk about don't get spoken about in the media and that's just really what it is it's like you got to sell what you're doing as well and i haven't sold it enough you know and i feel like i don't i mean i don't i don't feel like i need to i don't feel like i want people to call me a leader but i also don't want people to say i'm not one either KD, introspective there, a lot of self-awareness. The Boardroom's cover story starring Kevin Durant dropped yesterday on Boardroom.tv. All right, Stephen A., tell me this. Do you feel like KD hasn't been given the credit he deserves? No, I think he's been given exactly the credit that he deserves. I think that he's recognized as one of the greatest players that ever has played this game. Uh, just a professional scorer, one of the elite scorers. He's a two-time champion. He's a two-time NBA Finals MVP. He's universally respected and revered for his prowess on the basketball court. And that's exactly where it should stop. The fact of the matter is, is that Kevin Durant is a basketball savant. He is a brilliant basketball mind who does not spend enough time educating people on the game of basketball. He's usually whining about other people's positions as opposed to elaborating and educating the way he is fully capable of doing. That's the issue. You know, in the past, we can bring up the false account and all of that other stuff. I'm not getting into all of that. I love Kevin Durant, and I think that he's an even better person than he is a basketball player. But I've told him this to his face, and it, it's a problem with him. It's a problem with LeBron. It's a problem with a host of elite players. They're also elite basketball minds, and a lot of times they don't express it. They assume you don't know. They assume you don't have a capacity or a willingness to learn from what they're willing to educate you about as it pertains to their game and the way that they play it, and they don't speak enough on that. They will clap back at a comment or a tweet or something like that that somebody else has said. If a viral, if, if something goes viral and it ends up on social media or whatever, they'll clap back and they'll challenge you about what you said or whatever, but they don't do it in a fashion that their willingness to educate you about what you may not know. Instead, they're coming at you in a very cantankerous fashion half the time or a dismissive fashion because their attitude is you may not be worth their time. And that's really what is something that Kevin Durant has done on many occasions. And J.J. and Mad Dog, I'm not telling you anything that I haven't told Kevin Durant to his face from time to time. I said well, what you know about the game of basketball, if you really, really spoke on it more often, you'd be amazed at the level of understanding people will inherently gather because they have no choice because you know what the hell you're talking about. The problem is most of the time you choose not to articulate that position. And as a result, you leave people to their own devices. Sometimes they may get it right. Sometimes they may get it wrong. But in the end, when it comes to you, in terms of what you're recognized for being, a lot of times people don't say anything because you don't let them know. And a lot of other folks, your, a lot of your other contemporaries, don't let them know. Well, when I think of great leaders in basketball, I'm going to think of a guy like Magic Johnson, who ran the Lakers, who got Westhead fired, who brought in Riley, who put that team and won five championships. Listen, and if I'm going to follow Durant, I mean, I, to have his agent do the thing, I mean, you know, I, I can't pay attention to that. His agent's doing an interview with Durant. I mean, that's not exactly what I would call. That's not 60 minutes. That's not Mike Wallace. <laughs> but hold up. Hold the up. agent. That, uh, come on. That that's might, not. That might be where he's comfortable. Well, I mean, but being a leader is also being, you know, out there and talking to the press generally and getting your point across to the agent. Well, I'm just You're saying. You're going to do something you, with if, the agent? If you want to be honest and open and get your narrative out, I would maybe go on a friend's podcast as well. <sighs> I'm just saying. Have the guts to go on somewhere where maybe they won't be as friendly as with the agent. You know, at the Biltmore with a fireplace going in the background. Biltmore is a great hotel. It is. You know it is. But that, look at JJ. Biltmore is man a great ready. That is getting, that's a little rough to take. But here's the problem with Durant, right? He left Oklahoma City. He did not win. And he blew a 3-1 lead in that last year. Him and Westbrook had problems. Then he takes the easy way out to a lot of fans' thoughts by going to Golden State, who had already won a championship. 
He was a wonderful player with Golden State, don't get me wrong, and I love him as a player. I'm with Steve 100%. But he won the two titles in Golden State, and he already, already won one. Then he leaves there and follows Kyrie to the Nets in Brooklyn. Uh, that, you know, they had, he played great at times, but they didn't win. The Harden thing was a mess. Then he wanted Nash fired. Then he didn't want Nash fired. Then he wanted a trade. Then he didn't want a trade. Then he gets traded to Phoenix, and they get smoked by Denver in the first round and the second round of the playoffs. And they're eight, nine games over 500 today. I mean, Durant needs to win a title here. Durant needs to win a title. That's first and foremost. But when I think of a leader on a basketball team, I just don't think that's his personality. He is not the guy I would think of, Durant. A lot to unpack there from both of you guys. Um, just so you know, Molly, yeah. I promised my wife I wouldn't yell today, but I may have Did to yell, yell at Stephen A. Uh, based on his comments. I'm going to address the question first. The question is, does he get the credit he deserves? I think as a basketball player, Stephen A., I think you're right. I think he does get the credit he deserves, but there's always a but attached to it because of the decision. Um, you know, I, I talked about this in 2016, right after he chose to go to the Warriors, and I was a fan of that move. And I was on the Clippers and had to go compete against the Warriors. I knew our championship window was closed the second he signed that contract. But I was still a fan of the move because I believe players, they get, they get drafted, serve their rookie contract, play the five years. He gave nine years, nine great years to Oklahoma City. He had the right to pursue whatever was going to make him happy at the time. Just like he had the right after the Warriors run to pursue whatever was going to make him happy at the time. We are athletes. We have a finite amount of time to enjoy this ride. I had no problem with it. I have no problem, actually, with any decision he's made. Steph Curry is one of the greatest players of all time. This is not me pitting Kevin Durant against Steph Curry. The reality is, in the 17 finals, the 18 finals, Kevin Durant was the best player on the floor. He was the best player on the floor. There's a reason he won those finals MVPs. 35, 8, and 5, and 17, 56%, 47% from three, 29, 11, and 8 assists in 18, 53%, 41%. He was the best player. To me, he, he doesn't get the credit he deserves as a defensive player. These last few seasons, he's been phenomenal on that end. He doesn't get the credit he deserves because of his decision-making, which everyone wants to critique his decision-making. I don't necessarily think that's fair. I don't. And you can, you can have qualms here about his decision to team up with Kyrie and Brooklyn. Here's the reality. They were a James Harden injury, a Kyrie injury, and a toenail away, away from probably winning the 21 NBA Finals. Facts. That's the Facts. reality. And there's – look, NBA history is littered with what-ifs. Littered with what-ifs. On the leadership front, not everybody leads the same way. Are you, have you been in a locker room with Kevin Durant? I, here's what I know about Kevin Durant. I know that Kevin Durant leads by example. I know the way he approaches his craft. This is a guy that lives, breathes, eats, sleeps basketball. That's a form of leadership. Now I want to address Stephen A's point. Since when is it players' jobs to educate people on basketball? When did that become a thing? When did that become a thing? Isn't that our job? Isn't that our job? I'll answer. I'll I do answer that as my I'm, job. I'm, I'm, That's I'm, my job I'm, to educate I'm, people I'm on letting, basketball. I'm letting you speak, and no, then I, I'll I'm, answer. I'm, I, I'm, it's our job, Stephen A., to educate mm -hmm. people on basketball. It's okay. our job. And here's the reality. This is the okay. ecosystem we live in. I can do a okay. video on my podcast. I can do a video on my podcast where I break down the last nine games the Pelicans have used Zion Williamson as the primary ball handler and what type of actions that has led to. I looked it up this morning. 54,000 views on YouTube. But I want to call out a coach yesterday – Oh, that gets tens of millions of engagements. That's the ecosystem we live in. So do fans actually want to be educated or not? Mm -hmm. Do they? Mm -hmm. Okay, can I respond? Of course you can. It's your show. Thank you so much. First of all, <clears throat> a couple of things, because um, I'm glad you promised your wife that you wouldn't yell and that you broke your promise to her. So plan on going home and explaining the fact that you just violated, you know, what you promised your wife. So at, 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 at about 10 minutes into the show. So that's number one. But that's a personal problem. And I'm sure you'll handle it. Number two, when you talk about his job to educate, nobody said it was his job. But the fact of the matter is what you're what you're highlighting is something that 
indirectly, if not directly, you've lamented for quite a long time. And you're going to have to get over that, J.J. Just like Jay, just like Kevin Durant has the right to play. Let me finish. He has the right to play. And he also has the right to keep his thoughts to himself. And he has absolutely no obligation whatsoever to educate anybody because you're absolutely right. That's our job. Most folks in the media have been doing their job. And you bring up the question. You, you periodically ask questions like this. Have you been in the locker room with a player? Well, that depends on how you look at it because you've interviewed players in locker rooms if you're me for decades. You've done that if you're Mike Wilbon. Mike Wilbon co-authored the book that was that was that CP3 ultimately wrote. Okay, he went to a scribe in order to do that. Just because you didn't play and you didn't play on that level doesn't Stephen mean a. you don't Stephen know. A. Don't don't so don't the, cr don't don't jump on that bridge. Don't jump on that bridge. Oh, you, you know, you know I was up. I was not bringing it up. You don't need to tell me your track record. You I have told you a million I'm not times. I've done it on this record. show. I, I I know I'm not you talking are a about legend. That. You are a legend. Legendary journalist. Mike okay. Wilbon is a legendary journalist. That's not right. what I'm talking about. I'm not talking what about I'm being in the locker room after a game. Well, what are you talking don't, about? Don't, this is this is you the one that I'm brought it up. I'm asking the you what you're talking about. Day, the day-to-day -day work that is put in when the cameras are off. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking yeah, about the but sanctity the day, but, of a locker room. But it doesn't room, matter. The sanctity of a practice. We don't have oh, wait, privilege wait a minute. to see inside that. We okay, don't. okay, Unless that's fine. Unless you're on the team. That, 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 that's fine, but here's the reality. We do get to measure results then because we don't know. And the fact that, hold on, and then it is another thing, J.J. Reddick, most times folks ain't honest about it. They'll come in honesty later. But you're not going to give insight into what into the particulars that go on inside of a locker room. So somebody covering the team may not know this week. They might know next week. They might know the week after. And you know what you'll do then? Not you specifically. But you know what folks would do then? You're just looking for trouble. You're looking for the negativity. How much truth is there to that? You've seen God's plausible deniabilities. Mad Dog, how many times in your career have you seen one player after another, after another, deny, deny, deny? Critique, critique, critique. Insult, insult, insult. And then they retire and admit that the, the person was telling the truth all the damn long. That has happened on countless occasions. That is a Hall of Fame that you are a Hall of Famer that you are sitting across from right there in media, JJ, that has been covering media for 40 plus years. And he will tell you I am absolutely right. How many times do people sit up there and say, even when we do do our job just the same way you said we should, they will literally sit up there and engage in plausible deniability and deny your truth until they retire. And then they admit that they told the truth all along. So we see all of that stuff happening all the damn time. In the end, it is perfectly within, within bounds to sit up there and look at Kevin Durant, recognize him as being an absolutely phenomenal future Hall of Famer, first ballot without question, two-time champion, two-time NBA Finals MVP, one of the greatest players in the history of this game, and you can talk about different types of leadership, but we would argue that his type of leadership didn't necessarily lead to more success that he could have had. Does he owe it to anybody? No. But when you talk about the narrative, when you talk about how somebody is depicted, when you're talking about him in comparison to other bona fide leaders and what have you, Kevin Durant said it himself on a bottom ticker. You know what? In terms of him, want, I want people to call me a leader. It's not that I don't feel like I want people to call me a leader, but I also don't want them to say that I'm not one either. Well, which one is it? You, know, listen, you don't want them to call you your leader, but you don't want them to not call your leader. I don't Wait. know what to say about that. Wait. People have their preferences, and they're going to look and they're going to judge accordingly. The only thing you can definitively judge is what you see on the court. You can't yeah. judge anything else. Everything else is subject to perception, a perception yeah. that he has contributed to putting out there. It's a fact. I know